first time that I seen this old house, I fell in love with it. That's the house I want to buy. <laughs> Things started happening. I felt like there's people there that want to talk to me. <laughs> and I was crying. I seen where Daddy had was in the coffin. <laughs> Daddy is dead. I began asking questions. There are a lot of ghosts on this property that are not afraid to show themselves. Maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know. I heard you have a lot of activity in this home. Yes, there is. A man came into the car. He said he was waiting for our arrival. I'd love to see who would like to speak to you. I would do. Come on, let's go. I see a man standing with you. I'm asking him to identify himself. We have a lot of people here. <laughs> but we have company in the car. <laughs> And they said, finally, finally, our presence can be known. When I was growing up, I had, um, I had quite a few experiences of seeing things, but I never realized that I was seeing something or hearing something that other kids didn't hear, you know? or didn't see. I thought we all did it. And I was about 10 years old. I would see the people that had passed on walking around. I just thought everybody should be able to see it. Nobody else was seeing it but me. And I was seeing things I shouldn't be seeing, but I was. My mommy was really psychic, and um, her daddy was Cherokee Indian. I think mommy probably got the Indian side when it come to being able to know, to know what's going on. Because the Indians all seem to know. They live their life knowing what most of the time is going to happen tomorrow. Mommy could tell you what was going to happen uh, two weeks before it happened, and everybody would laugh at her, you know, but usually when what mommy said it was gonna happen, really did. She told me about Doolittle, the man I married, way before it happened, and I laughed at her, cause I wasn't old enough to think about a man to begin with, but she told, it, told me exactly what was gonna happen. And then after I got married and moved out, which I was just young when I did that, uh, too young, but I, we moved. Spirits don't scare me, really. What scares me is my dreams. When I dream a bad dream, it scares me to death sometimes because I just sit and wait for something to happen. And 99% of the time, something bad will happen if I dream. And that's hard, that's hard. When I lived out in Washington, this is, this is weird. I woke up at four in the morning I was crying. I said, uh, do? I said, I just had a bad dream. I seen where Daddy had was in the coffin. This coffin! <laughs> he said, well, go on back to sleep. No! Daddy's dead! 
And I told him, I said, no, daddy is dead. So I got out of bed. And uh, about five o'clock in the morning, the neighbor come uh, and knocked on the door and said, uh, I needed to, to, to go to his house and uh, take a phone call because we didn't have a telephone. And got on the phone with my sister-in-law. And she said, Loretta, you need to sit down. And I said, well, what's wrong? She said, your daddy just died. And when I got home, I told mommy, I said, this is the suit and this is the coffin that I dreamed. You can better believe that there is something behind these dreams that come true. Me and my husband was out uh, just driving around on a Sunday. And we did that a lot. When I'd come home and off the road, we'd go out driving around on the weekends. And we'd come by this big old white house here. The first time that I seen this old house, I fell in love with it. And I told my husband, that's the house I want to buy. And um, he found out that the guy that owned this house worked in the bank. So we got a hold of him and we bought it. When we drove by and seen the house, I think I knew that there would be a lot of history with this house because the place is so old and there were so many people lived and died in this house. During the Civil War, they used the rooms that was built for a hospital here. So I kind of think it was probably a lot of people, a lot of boys died in that house. There's been a lot of history. I knew that there would be spirits in this old house. I knew that. I felt like, you know, there's people there that want to talk to me. I, I felt like something was going on and I needed to be there. Mommy, come down here one time. Mommy told me, says, one of your kids is going to drown. And I thought, no, all my kids can swim. But Mommy told me, Loretta, you need to move away from here. All this water is, is not good. So really, I thought, well, Mommy could be wrong this time. And that's when things started happening. One more trouble is gonna come. Mommy, it's so bad. Mommy told me, says one of your kids is gonna drown. I thought, well, mommy could be wrong this time. And that's when things started happening. got every album on the stairway that leads upstairs. I started with my first album cover, uh, going up that stairway. Sometimes, when you go through that house,
the albums will absolutely turn crossways on the wall. You can straighten it back out. As long as you're standing there, as long as you're in that room, they won't, they won't um, turn. But you go out of the room and else your turn. And <laughs> they'll make you wonder, what the heck happened? How did these pictures and, and uh, the album covers get so crooked? So I don't know who's doing that. It was a, of a night that we would hear things. Of course, the room would be dark, so I couldn't see. I'd wake him up and say, listen to this, and he'd listen. <laughs> I could wake him up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, honey, listen to this. There's somebody in high heels going up the stairs. And he'd say, I don't hear nothing. And he'd just say, oh, I'll go on back to sleep. That ain't nothing, you know? He did not want to hear it or hear, believe in it. But he knew that I wasn't just hearing things. He knew I heard it, because he heard it too. I have t little twin girls, uh, Patsy and Peggy, the twins. <laughs> Every morning, they would have a different story to tell about the woman that come and stood by their bed. Every night, they would see a woman dressed in white. When we got to listening, it was old timey clothes that they were talking about. And women that wore their hair up, you know, back in them days. Peggy would say, Mommy, I kept real, real quiet because I thought if I'd be quiet, she'll go over to Patsy's bed. The next night, it would be Patsy saying the same thing. I thought if I'd be quiet, she'd go over to Peggy's bed. Uh, you know, that went on every night, every night when they were little and growing up. So there, I'm not the only one seeing and heard things in that house. I had two sons, one of them, Jack. He told me one night he woke up. He said, I was drinking, Mom, and I come in and I laid down on the bed. And I laid down on my stomach. Hey, wait. And I woke up, and this guy was trying to pull my boots off. <laughs> had an old hat and a big hole in the hat. It was a soldier. Get out of my house! And he said, I had my dog, my dog Mickey was with me. <coughs> and said Mickey was growling at the guy and showing every tooth in his head. Mickey, get him! He said that um, the dog <coughs> jumped and went right through the one guy. But Jack said, when it did that, then I knew that I was seeing something. And he said, I got up, and I stumbled all the way, way to the top of the stairs, and I fell down the stairs. He said, I couldn't get down fast enough, so I just fell down. It scared him to death. 
That's the only time that Jack had talked to me about seeing anything. I was on tour. Um, me and my fr a friend of mine went with me on this trip. I'd gotten sick, to tell you the truth. They had stopped and put me off at the hospital. And um, so I was so sick that they had me in intensive care. I dreamed that I'd lost my boy. And I told the closest friend I had. I was trying to put my dream together and trying to tell her exactly how I felt about this dream. When my husband walks in the hospital room and I looked up and I seen my husband come walking through the door and I said, well, honey, you've come to see me. And um, he walked over to bed and said, um, Loretta, Jack died. And that was such a shock that I couldn't even put that together, you know. I didn't want to believe it, so I just looked at him like, you're crazy. But Jack had died. He died here at the house. He had uh, drowned. He was going across the river by horseback. And he got thrown from the horse. And I think maybe it knocked him out when he was thrown from the horse. And he drowned then. But I don't know. You know, it, maybe it's good that I don't know. It, uh, it was a terrible thing when I lost my boy. It was, um, it, it was awful. So we won't even talk about that. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. I'm not sure it's Mommy pretty well told me what was going to happen. And um, I think you have to listen to people like that, that are really connected. I think you need to listen to them. And um, so uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a terrible time in my life. It might be a thing I just don't even want to talk about. It's, I think that's the way I'll leave it. It's not a good thing to think about. He walked over to bed and said, um, Loretta, Jack died. He died here at the house. He had uh, drowned. He was going across the river by horseback. <laughs> it was a terrible time in my life. It might be a thing I just don't even want to talk about. It's, I, I think that's the way I'll leave it. It's not a good thing to think about. When I come home one time, and it, it was raining at like 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon. It was misty rain, you know, and it was in the fall. And I seen this woman on the balcony. And uh, she was dressed in white, and she was hanging over the balcony, wringing her hands just like this. And she was crying. I thought, what the world's wrong with that woman? I thought, now, the housekeeper must have said something to her and it hurt her feelings. So I go in and I said to Gloria, you know, who's the woman upstairs crying? She says, nobody's here but me. And she was right, nobody was there but her. I saw a woman on the balcony crying. It wasn't, it wasn't a shadow, it was a woman. The woman that I seen is the woman that uh, my girls see, that they have been seeing ever since they were little. And it was the same woman. When I seen this lady, I began asking questions 
the people had lived here for years and years and years. And they told me who built the home, who lived there, but it was old man Anderson. And then there was a, a bunch of people in there by the name of Sanders. So I went over to a friend of mine that lives down here at their house, Miss Meadows. She brought out pictures of the people that had lived here before we moved here. I was looking through pictures, trying to find the picture of the lady on the, in the, on the balcony. And I found it. I picked her picture out from, and said, this is the woman right here. And Miss Meadows had the picture of her. The lady in white was one of the Andersons. Beulah Anderson? I could tell from her face that it was the same woman. And uh, then I find out that this lady that lived in the brown room upstairs, her and her husband, had had this baby. Her baby died. Come, sorry. Come. And um, after the baby died, she mourned herself to death. <laughs> they said she cried all the time. And I, I could imagine, you know, losing your baby. You know, that would have been hard to take. And of course, I lost a son. And um, and she's buried right there with the baby, right beside of her, over here in the graveyard. And that's who I saw. I think she's still there. Um, I know she's still there. You that come through, if you're a psychic or if you can see spirits, talk to her. Ask her why she's still there. I'll have to do that. I hadn't thought of it, but I will. We have company. just came into the car. I don't think I'm weird or anything, don't get scared. But we have company in the car with us. Just as I passed a certain spot, a man came into the car and he uh, wanted his presence to be known. He said he was waiting for our arrival. Keep going. I'm waiting for him to tell me his name. It sounds as if he's saying James. His name is James. I almost feel as if he's going to give us a uh, give give us a tour. There are a lot of ghosts on this property that are not afraid to show themselves. They're they're very open to being seen. And they said, finally, finally, uh, our presence can be known. Actually, could you stop the car? We asked if we can stop the car right here. Well, what's winding up happening here, and I don't know if this is what you planned, uh, uh, like I said, you cannot plan these things, is uh, Mr. Anderson is has decided to tell the story his way and what he knows. Uh, he wants to be in charge here. He tells me he'll stop me when, when we pass an open field now. It's an open field with a body of water right around it. Well, this looks like what I'm seeing in my vision, this small body of water. This is the body of water. And I actually can see uh, horses crossing over the, uh, this stream. A lot of bloodshed right here, I feel. A lot, a lot of soldiers in this area. Lots. There's a big vortex of energy right around here. Ghosts that still think they're in battle. I could hear the soldiers yelling. I can actually hear the horses 
you know, running and the, the galloping. I could hear it. I could hear the gunshots. I could see the blood. I can smell the artillery. A moment in time is still right here. There's a lot of those people that are still roaming around this property. There is a place we, we may have to stop. Definitely um, one of the cemeteries. This one is where a lot of the family resides, but there's another cemetery that, that I'm very drawn to on this property. This gentleman, James, he feels as if he really protects Loretta and her family. This, this must be him. Well, he tells me it's him. J-A-S. That's probably his middle initial. He told me something about the house, if we go further up, there's um, more information. I think he's actually leading me towards the house. Since Loretta's husband passed away, he really stepped up to the plate as the protector of the property and of Loretta and her family. He still feels he has a role to play here. He told me that he's going to interfere with the audio to let his presence be known. You may, you may get some white noise that's going to come on the audio part of it, so. He definitely wants his presence to be known. He has a, uh, he has a wife, and he said that she's also uh, one of the ghosts that have not crossed over. Hi, I'm Kim. Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm glad to see you, because maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know. I would love to. Oh, well, great. I would love to. Hey. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Kim. Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm glad to see you, because maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know. I would love to. Oh, well, great. I would love to. Thank I'm you for having you. me. I'm glad to see you, because maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know. You have a lovely home here. Well, thank you. Do you mind if we take a walk around? I heard you have a lot of activity in this home. Yes, there is. Look at that. Yeah, You're okay. Cherokee, aren't you? Yeah, I'm Cherokee. Half Cherokee. That's beautiful. You know, Cherokee people are very psychic. Are they really? Oh, yes, very psychic. Whose horses are those? They were my husband's. Was there any of them that were? Beige or white? I had a white horse. You did? Yeah. OK. I sure did. I had a beige horse at one time, too. So you hit it on the head there. OK, well, we talked a little bit about that earlier when we were coming up to the house. There's a few actual energies that are roaming this property on a daily basis. I'm Crystal Briggs. I am the woman that has been with Ernest for 14 years, which is Loretta's son. Ernest and I live 500 yards from Loretta. We can see the mansion from our house. We can see the graveyard from our house. So we're right here in the middle of them all. And uh, they come and go as they please. And, and we acknowledge them sometimes, you know, if we hear them or, or see them or anything, we'll just tell them, you know, go on about your business and we'll go on about ours. He won't go outside after dark, neither will I, you know? <laughs> but uh, there, there's lots of things out here. We don't, we don't like to come up to the house at night or anything like that because the spirits are very much around. You can come up here anytime and you're gonna see something or hear something. There was 19 Confederate soldiers buried in the front yard and, and anytime you're liable to run into one of them fully suited. So it's, it, is a, it, it is a scary thing sometimes. There was a lot of activity that was being shown in this room as well. I imagine because there's the back stairway. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's what I keep hearing, something about the stairway. Or that's go, where go. I would hear the heel, high heels go up every uh -huh. time I'd come home. I'd wake my husband up and say, now listen. You listen to this, and there'd be high heels going up the yeah. stairs. Yeah, yeah. Is know. that woman in this home? I think so, yeah. Because nobody ever gets to go upstairs. But all these here, <laughs> And I come back one day and they turn sideways. Sideways, huh? Uh -huh. Well, that's yeah. the spirits. Yeah. Well, there is a, a gentleman and a woman that, that 
frequent this home very often. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. This was the twins' room? This was the twins' room. They probably have a lot of stories to tell in this room. When I seen the shadow downstairs with that glass lighting door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a figure of a woman just walked by there one night, and I was out there just looking at it, you know. Here come this woman. I said, they're still with me. They're, they're still with you, though. You know yeah. that. This is the brown room. This is the honey room. Yeah, because my boy slept out there, too, the one that kept seeing uh, man. This is the honey room, oh, real this, honey. You feel how cold it is in here? Yeah. It is. Isn't it <gasps> extra, extra yeah, cold? Yeah, it is. Compared really, to the other rooms, it's a it is. breeze, and I don't think it's the windows. No. I, the other rooms have windows just the same kind. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, the, the, her feed to me is just like quadrupled. Wait, whose feed? Um, well, we're on the sound, didn't you? Mm hmm. What happened to it, man? Are you cutting the roll? No. No. In the car on the drive here, he called himself James. And he said that in order, he was very excited that we were coming. So he told me that during the filming, he was going to mess with the audio just to let us know his presence. And it seems as if they're having trouble with the audio right now. Is that the case? That would be correct. That don't shock me at all. He's very fond of you. Well, good. And protective. Uh, and he did tell me that since your husband passed on, he took on that role of protector <laughs> of the property. That place, yeah. The whole property. He, well, I like kind of feel that watchman. way, too. Yeah. It's like a night watchman. Yeah. Sorry, yes. How, how's the audio doing? It's OK now. That was pretty freaky. Now, at one time, this was a little bedroom. Oh. And do put a bath and a big bathroom in here. Oh, this is one that goes out on the patio. You know. This? This is where the woman it was that I saw. This is the big balcony where I seen the lady. The that, lady. The lady that was crying. And this is exactly what she showed me, but it, it was not a bathroom. The fact that you say that was a bedroom, that's what yeah, she still bedroom. remembers it as a bedroom. My vision, but she told me, she does stay here quite a bit. She was right here. She's crying, doing like this when I come up the drive. Mm-hmm. Yes, she does. She's this is she's kind of, I don't want to say the word stuck, but more or less attached to this spot. Yes. She lost her baby, and she kept looking for that baby. Well, she, I believe she's she still is. I think for her appearances to show herself, she hasn't crossed over into the other dimension. Really? So she wouldn't be attached so much to the property and the home. Earthbound spirits are usually didn't cross over. No. I was told it was a boy. Well. So I don't know if there's any way for you to check that out, but. Well, probably out there in the graveyard, because there's a baby buried there with his mama. I feel so much energy, it, it almost knocked you to your feet before. Yeah, I know. Uh, how would you like if maybe we can go downstairs and have uh, a, a chat, and I can see what comes through? It is, it is okay. what I do. And I'd love to see who would like to speak to you. Would All right, you, would I would you, too. Would you like that? <laughs> sure, okay, great. come on, let's go. Go ahead and say your prayer anyway. Oh, no, no. Dear Lord, just keep us safe during this reading. Please bring information set forth that Loretta would like to hear that will be helping and healing information for all concerned. Thank you. Amen. So, Loretta, we've um, briefly gone over the tour of your home, and I wanted to just go over some of the things that have been happening prior to coming to the house today. I actually did drive through the property along roads that uh, were... The man came for the car. He's going to give us a tour. Actually, be, I was being given a tour by Mr. Anderson. He called himself James, and they told me that he, that was Mr. Anderson. Yeah, that's his name. Who lived prior in this home. Mm -hmm. He was excited about our arrival, possibly about our reading, just to see, you know, he knew that I was going to meet with you. We have a lot of people here, by the way. Um, but I feel that your family's in the front, uh, the closest ones to your heart. Um, now, is it okay? if um, I start to bring in some family members for you that sure. have crossed over.
Now, is it okay if um, I start to bring in some family members for you that sure. have crossed over? I see a man standing with you. I'm asking him to identify himself. He's either your husband or your brother because he's a contemporary for you, and he's but he's coming across with a lot of love. Something you have his cowboy hat. That would be my husband. He said she has the hat, and he laughed. He says that was my hat. He's a character, your husband. He's very much of a character. He had a belly at one time. A long time. <laughs> he told me he doesn't That's have it anymore. Belly. <laughs> And why does your husband keep talking about the pancreas, the pancreas? Does that mean he was a diabetic then? When the pancreas yeah, doesn't he work? Had, yeah, he was a diabetic. Yeah, that's what killed him, was sugar diabetes. But no more blame, he said. He's not taking any blame, and no one else should have any blame for the passing of your son. He said that, on some crazy level, was his time. He said not to blame you or him or anyone. It was just, it was a freak accident. That's what he says. I feel like the horse or a horse got scared. Mm -hmm. It was like, got frightened and shaken and just like took off. So you do understand that? Yeah. It don't make us feel any better, but it was an accident. It doesn't make, no, no, no it doesn't take away that pain. But no. as far as any kind of guilt though, he he's making that a big part of this reading. I think he felt guilty. I think it uh, do thought maybe I felt he was t the cause of it, because him and Jack didn't get along. They were just alike. That's why they couldn't get along. Well, they're getting along now, just well. And you've dreamt of your husband. You have dreamt of him. Oh, I dream of him a lot. He said he's been in your dreams, and you've hugged, you've, had, you've embraced, and he said that's not your imagination. That was real. Oh. <laughs> he wanted you to know that was real, because it's like I almost feel like you woke up sad and didn't want to leave, but he said, that was my gift to you, and now is visiting you in that dream state. There's a few things with, with your son, Ernest, that he said your premonition about Ernest are not, don't worry, they're not going to come to fruition. So to me, he's indicating that Ernest is, has a lot of um, health issues as well, mm -hmm. as, as well as uh, some battles in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're praying on the other side. He said, if you tell Loretta I'm praying, she won't believe you. That's right. <laughs> but he, did, he <laughs> is praying. He told me that his pancreas didn't work either. That's what Ernest Strays got, his bad pancreas. That's what, he, that's what he's in the hospital for. He's there now? He just got out. I was sitting here listening to y'all's interview um, with Loretta and Kim, and there were some things that were really amazing to me that were uh, spoken between the two of them. Ernie has had pancreatitis uh, and been in and out of the hospital a lot lately, and uh, that's been kept very private, um, that only amongst family members, and there's no way that anyone outside of the family would know about it. And yes, um, he has it has had issues with the exact thing that Kim was talking about with his pancreas. Your husband also tells me that he is with simultaneously here with Mr. Anderson checking in on everyone. It's just that Mr. Anderson has not really crossed. He's more earthbound to the property. And Mr. Anderson, he told me that uh, his wife stays up in the balcony in your home. He has a wife. He's also the ghosts that have not crossed, crossed over. over. Upstairs where yeah. the bedroom used to be. Uh -huh. So he said to me that he has a hard time getting her away from that space. <laughs> and what she does is she just goes up and down these steps all day long. She feels very connected to you. So if, if she were alive in your day, you and her would have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> And so she feels very bonded to you, and she actually has not crossed over, according to what, what I'm being told. Um, I wonder she's, why. Well, she's very attached to this space. When her baby died, and then she died shortly after that, the baby did go on to the other side. She didn't want to leave, thinking she was leaving him behind. <laughs> So we're in the cemetery that he's buried. Um, what she probably doesn't realize is that if she does cross over properly, 
she will be with her baby. And Mr. Anderson is attached to her, so it's, it's like this whole family circle. He is trying to prompt her to go with him, but she's not leaving. Now, basically, I can help you, I can help give you some advice. I have no doubt that it's Beulah in this house. It's the woman who lost the baby because she made that very clear and she said yeah. she has a big connection to you. And you have a lot in common as we spoke about. But you can actually, uh, you don't have to be in this house while you ask her or encourage her to leave, but you could talk to her in your mind and you could just tell her that her baby is to be found on the other side and that's where we all go to and how you enjoyed having her here and that it's not as if you're kicking her out and she can always visit if she likes, and she will have access to visit once she crosses over into the, into the light, so to speak. I don't think she knows that. A lot of these uh, spirits are afraid of what lies beyond. And if I leave, will I ever reunite with my child? Um, oh, I see. But basically, you can encourage her. Okay. If you feel comfortable, she is pretty much up, always up on that balcony. So if you feel like you want to visit there maybe at six o'clock at night and go. That's maybe. after dark. <laughs> it usually I'm is. I'm a scary cat. <laughs> okay, so go in the morning, she'll hear you. She can hear your thoughts. Okay. And basically you will find a lot less activity because they'll all go. Mr. Anderson and Bueller will go together. Um, he's anxiously waiting For to her. take her and go. Okay. To reunite as a family. Okay, and that's basically what they've been looking for all these years anyhow, is to reunite with their son. Okay. Uh, and, and just to understand, their son is not in the cemetery down the road. Yeah. I mean, he's physically there, but he's really, his spirit, his soul is on the other side where they can reunite. And now if you would like to give Bueller a gift and Bueller's family, he, he's encouraging you. He said, it has to be done. You are the lady that can do it. Do you think you could do it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Everybody that lived in that house died in that house. And we'll probably die here. I know my husband did. I will too. It's a good place to live and die, really. It's a good place. I like it.